Hi, and thank you for tuning in to the Daily Dose for Spiritual Growth. So glad that you're joining us today. This week, if you're just catching up, we are talking about freedom in Christ. What does it mean to be free in Christ? And we've talked about that. We've talked about salvation. We've talked about forgiveness of sin. We've talked about how it was bought and at a price. The freedom wasn't free, but Jesus gave his life for you to be set free. Have you taken advantage of that? Have you found forgiveness for your sins? I have, and it was the best decision that I have ever made. I discovered that I could never have done it on my own, but I take the word of God at its word that it was only made possible through the blood of Jesus. And yet now today we're going to talk about how do you live as free in Christ? How do you live in that freedom? What should that look like? Now, when you look to the word of God, some of the questions and concerns that come up when that question is posed, how should we live as free in Christ? Some of the things they were struggling with back in Bible times, we still struggle with today. What should I do? What behavior should I choose? How should I live that out? Paul has to address this. He has to deal with a group of people that are saying, hey, wait a minute, I I see what's happening here. You said that when I sin, the grace of God covers it. And it it shows who God is through that grace. I have a question here. What if I just sin more and more and more? Wouldn't that be great? Because then the grace of God can abound more and more and make himself known. And Paul's like, really, God? Really? That's what you want to talk about? But see, we have some of that today. We have people today. We can be those people who think, you know what? I've been forgiven. So I can do this. I can do that. I can take advantage of that grace and that freedom and that forgiveness. And I want to read a verse to you, very similar concept that they were struggling with, found in 1 Peter chapter 2. I love 1 Peter. If you haven't read it in a while, 1 and 2, they're both stellar. They are awesome. So much good stuff. We're just going to read a couple of verses today. This is found in 1 Peter chapter 2, beginning in verse 16, and I'm actually going to jump back up, but we'll get there. It says, live as free people, but, okay, but means Take this into consideration as you do what I just said, okay? So he's saying here, live as free people, but do not use your freedom as a cover-up for evil. Live instead. It's live as God's slaves. Did you catch that? It's that same concept of, hey, should I just sin more and more because then God's grace will abound? Wait a minute. It was still happening here. It's still happening today where we can so quickly deceive ourselves. We can deceive ourselves into justifying sinful behavior, justifying sinful attitudes, justifying bad practices, bad habits, and hangups, and say, well, we're free in Christ. God sees me as pure and perfect. And yet he's saying, don't deceive yourselves here. Don't use your freedom as a cover-up just to continue sinning. But you may be thinking, well, well, how should I live then? Glad you asked. We're going to backtrack here to verse 13 and and practically speaking, they begin listing out what what it should look like in our lives to live free in Christ. And this is going to step on some toes. I'm thankful I didn't write this. But the word of God is true. It's living. It can affect us today. And so let this kind of seep into your heart and let the Holy Spirit convict you, let it convict me where we need to be convicted. Listen to what the word of God says when it comes to living in the freedom of Christ. Verse 13, 1 Peter chapter 2. Submit yourself for the Lord's sake, okay? Do this for the sake of God. Do this for God. It says, submit yourselves for the Lord's sake to every human authority. Oh, I know that's tough. Let's read on. Whether to the emperor as the supreme authority, in our culture, that would be the president, or to governors who are sent by him to punish those who do wrong and to commend those who do right. For it is God's will that by doing good, you should silence the ignorant talk of foolish people. Okay. <laughs> he's, he's reminding us of why we live holy lives. He's reminding us of why we make morally right choices. He's reminding us of when it's easier to do wrong, why we as believers in Christ do right. It's integrity. Even if no one's watching, do right. Why? Because when we choose to live our lives in a holy manner before the Lord, it's for the sake of God himself. It's an act of offering and thankfulness and gratitude for all he's done. But it also, did you catch that? When we live right lives as believers, it silences, it silences the ignorant talk of foolish people. It's to be a witness. 
It's to show the world that Christ has made a difference in our lives. Yes, we can do anything is permissible for me, Paul writes, but not everything is beneficial. And here it's working that out. Right after that, it goes on to the verse I read before. Oh, wait, let me read this verse. Verse 15. For it is God's will that by doing good, you should silence the ignorant talk of foolish people. Live as free people, but do not use your freedom as a cover up for evil. Live as God's slaves. Verse 17. Show proper respect to everyone. Love the family of believers. Fear God. Honor the emperor or authority. Challenging thoughts today. How we live our lives as free in Christ is a testimony and a testament to the goodness of God and what he has done in our lives. We choose to live even in our freedom as honest, honorable, integrity, faithful, committed, hardworking, diligent, forgiving, gracious, humble. We live out these attributes of God as Jesus modeled them himself so that we can be ambassadors and share the message of Jesus Christ so that our adversaries, so that our enemies have nothing negative to say about us, but that we honor the Lord in our choices. Let's just take some time today. Let's just open ourselves up and say, Holy Spirit, reveal to me. (laughs) Would you just point out some areas in my life that I haven't been honoring you, that I haven't been using my, my freedom in Christ to really honor and submit to you the authority in this world to submit to the things in this life to honor you. I want to challenge you to ask the Holy Spirit that and then respond to whatever he may speak to you. Would you be so bold? Let's really say, God, we want to be an, a representation of you as, a, as an act of thankfulness and gratitude to the freedom that we've only found in you. Hey, I want to thank you so much for tuning in today and I hope to see you again tomorrow for another Daily Dose for Spiritual Growth.